It is wonderful to see all of you here today. I'm glad you can join us for this joyous Easter service. A couple notes about the service. When it comes time for communion, as Lutherans, we believe that Christ is really present in the bread and wine we share, and all are welcome to receive communion here. And during these COVID days, the way we do it is we have a drop of wine that's already been placed on the wafer. So when you come forward, if you can cup your hands, that lets us drop the wafer into your hands without touching them. And then you can go back to your pews and lift your mask and consume the wafer there. The offering plate is in the back. There are hymns and anthems that you are welcome to hum along to behind your mask or maybe even very softly mouth the words, but we're not singing out with full voice yet. And I need some help. Could Blake and Byron, could you come up here for a minute and help me out? Because until we got something we can do before we can start the Easter service. There's a word we haven't said for two and a half months. Hop up on the steps so everybody can see you. You grab that end. And you grab that end and unroll it for me. What's the word? Hallelujah. Now we can begin Easter. Thank you, boys. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O 
God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. From the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone that fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message that he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. We read the song responsively. You have the bold faith. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation, echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and take the rest of the Lord. 
This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. I tell the Lord, this is our marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to all of you. Did anybody find their Easter basket yet this morning? Yeah. Anybody still waiting for the Easter bunny to come while you're at church? You all got it? So you're all sugared up and you're all ready to go? Okay. Well, you do not have to be completely quiet or still here. That's okay if you have to move around a little bit. So, what was in your Easter basket? Broccoli? Uh, zucchini? What was in it? Eggs? Like real eggs? Any ones that weren't real? Candy eggs? Plastic eggs? Stuff that's really sweet? Yeah. So why do you think we get sweet stuff on Easter? That's a tough question, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'll tell you why. Because what God did on Easter
Easter was really sweet. Jesus had been dead, and God made him alive again. Is that a good thing? Yeah. And God did that to show us that God's love never ends. God loves us when we're little kids, and when you're as big as mummies or daddies, and when you're as big as grandmas and grandpas, and even after we die, God keeps loving us in heaven. So God's love is really sweet, and it's there for us always and forever. And that's what Easter teaches us, and that's why we get sweet stuff on Easter, to remind us that this is a really, really sweet day, because God did some really, really good stuff on this day. So the clipboards I gave you before the service, you've got some stickers there, you've got something sweet in there. You can leave the clipboards on the pews. We'll clean them before the next service, take everything else with you. And we are glad you're here with us today. Let's say a prayer. Holy God, thank you for your Easter love that is so, so sweet. Amen. Would you please pray with me? God, breathe your spirit into us. Breathe your spirit into us so that we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear with our hearts the message that you have for us this day. In your most holy, awesome, and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! You got it! Let's do it one more time with a little more holy gusto excitement. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Nice. Except, that's not how Mark's gospel tells the resurrection story, is it? In Mark's gospel, there is no celebration at the resurrection. There are no shouts of hallelujahs. Instead, they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone. For they were afraid. And according to a lot of scholars, that's how Mark ended his writing. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Mark begins his gospel with the words, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Except it doesn't conclude with a, a feel-good ending. It doesn't end with the reunion of Jesus and the disciples. There is no triumphal entry of Jesus. It doesn't end with the women tripping over their feet in excitement to tell the world of the good news. It ends with the women tripping over their feet in terror, silent for fear, gripped by grief, with Jesus nowhere to be seen. This is not a satisfying ending in the least bit. But this is the end of Mark's Gospel. The women deep in their grief, they had seen the reality Jesus' death. They had journeyed with him to Jerusalem, and to the trial, and then to the crucifixion. And they watched as he was laid in a tomb. They had heard the promise that death would not have the last say, the promise of Jesus' resurrection, and the promise of reunion. But after what they witnessed just a couple of days prior, they were deep in their grief. And the women were afraid when Jesus' body wasn't there. Afraid, perhaps, of the reality of the resurrection. Afraid of what would come next in the story. Afraid of what people would say or do to them if they told anyone what they had just seen and heard. Things that seemed impossible to their human minds. The women were afraid. And so it's no wonder that they were not ready to sing praises and to shout alleluia when they found the tomb empty, except for an angelic young man. Of course.
course, they were not ready to joyously proclaim the good news that Jesus is risen. They were afraid. They were gripped by grief. They were not ready for an Easter celebration. They went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Those might be the last words of the gospel, but the ending is a little bit earlier in the words of the young man they found in the tomb. He has been raised. He's not here. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will meet him, just as he told you. The women were afraid and grieving. Yet still, still, the Easter resurrection happened. Jesus is risen. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. He knew his disciples would be scared. He knew that they would be grieving. Yet still, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is spread. The good news that says that even in and after and through denial, betrayal, fear, doubt, grief, even in all of that and after all of that, the promises of God stand firm. Jesus has gone on to Galilee, where he promised he would see the disciples after the resurrection. Jesus is gathering his followers from wherever they had run off to and bringing them back to him. Jesus is once again reminding us that the promise of forgiveness and love and life is real, and it cannot be stopped by the women running from the tomb, afraid to say anything. And it cannot be stopped by our own fears and griefs. We are at our second Easter, in what has turned out to be a very long pandemic. Maybe you're coming to this space eager to joyfully shout out Alleluia and to proclaim Christ's resurrection. Maybe you're feeling light and excited to be celebrating the good news of Jesus Christ, ready and hungry for an Easter celebration with Alleluia's ringing. Or maybe, like the women in today's gospel, you're not quite ready for an Easter celebration today. Maybe you've come to this day weary and gripped by the grief of a long pandemic. The grief of loved ones who have died, the grief of being separated from loved ones, the grief of moments or traditions that have been missed or lost this past year. Maybe you're overwhelmed with the grief at the brokenness seen in so much of this world. Maybe you have come to this day afraid. You might not be ready to shout out Alleluia and stumble in excitement to spread the good news of Jesus' resurrection. But whether you come to this day joyful and excited and ready to shout Alleluia, or you come to this day weary, gripped by grief and not at all ready, to leave all that weighs you down behind and celebrate the joys of Easter. Still, the Easter resurrection happens. Mark began his gospel telling us that this was the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And in Mark's ending, as seemingly unsatisfying as it may be, we can still see that good news lighting the way. The good news of resurrection and of God's promises of life and love and grace and God's promise to be with us always, always calling us home in God. The good news 
of Jesus Christ does not rely on whether we are shouting alleluia at the top of our lungs today, or if, like the women, we're not quite ready for that jubilant, carefree celebration this year. No matter what our hearts are feeling, the Easter resurrection still happens. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He is calling us to him, and we will see him just as he promised. And so we come to this day joyfully celebrating Easter, celebrating resurrection, celebrating while we are full of that excitement of shouting hallelujah, and celebrating while we are afraid and grieving. By celebrating the resurrection, we're not ignoring our grief or hiding our fear. Rather, we are celebrating the fact that just as the women were called to Jesus in their grief, and just as Peter was called back to Jesus in his fear, we too are called to Jesus just as we are. Excited, grieving, fearful, amazed, joyful, we are called to the risen Christ, reassured of the promises of God, the promise that God knows our deepest sorrows and our greatest moments of happiness and joy. And through it all, God is with us, and God calls us back to God so that we can be reassured again and again and again that the love and grace of God has power over fear and grief, has power over sin and death. And in response to that certainty, there's only one thing we can say. Regardless of what our hearts might be feeling today, we can only say, Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! Amen.
Together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our prayer response today is, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Alleluia. God, you are resurrection. Bring joy to your church as we spread the good news that Jesus is risen. Lead us to proclaim this message with persistence and confidence. Hear us, O God. Hear us, Alleluia. God, you are creator. Open our eyes to the first fruits of new life all around us. To budding trees, nourishing rains, warm breezes, and freshly tilled soil. Inspire our gratitude and renew our commitment to stewardship of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia. God, you are reconciliation. You show no partiality among nations, but instead call all people to the way of peace. Bring an end to conflict and division. Renew leaders and advocates for peace with a commitment to the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Alleluia, God, your strength. Awaken hope and perseverance in all who need a word of life this day. Those who are hungry, anxious, oppressed, despairing, or sick. Especially Bill, Edith, Chris, Dorothy, Janet, Mike, Amy, Tom, Laurie, Colleen, Anusha, Jerry, Caroline, Larry, and those we name out loud and in our hearts. Mommy. Hear us, O God. Alleluia, God, your comfort. Draw near to all who grieve. Refresh us with the promise that you will destroy death and that with all the saints we will be made alive forever in Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is His right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your love, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word, sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks, said to you, to you said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and wine, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, gives everyone a place at the welcome table. Alleluia. Come to the feast. You may be seated.
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the closing anthem. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 